He always knew that family trips were not my thing, especially when it came to my wife's family. But Sarah insisted so much on this ski resort that I simply couldn't refuse her. Moreover, her mother Linda was also supposed to come with us, and our relationship had always been strained, to put it mildly. Michael, have you packed your things yet? Sarah shouted from the next room. We're leaving in an hour. Yes, almost ready, I replied, throwing the last items into the suitcase. The prospect of spending a whole week in Linda's company was worrying me. She had always treated me with a certain disdain and never missed an opportunity to taunt me at every turn. Don't forget to take warm socks, Sarah said, peeking into the bedroom. It's always cold at ski resorts. Thanks for caring, I smiled, mentally preparing myself for the upcoming trials. When we arrived at the resort, an unpleasant surprise awaited us. It turned out that due to a booking error, Linda and I would have to share a room, while Sarah and the rest of the family would be staying in another hotel. No way! I'm not going to live in the same room with you, Linda protested upon learning about this. Believe me, this situation doesn't suit me any more than it does you, I parried, but we have no choice. As we unpacked our things in the room, the atmosphere was getting tense. Linda never missed an opportunity to make a jibe at me, and I struggled to restrain myself from snapping back. I hope you don't snore at night, she said, laying out her outfits in the closet. Only if I have a nightmare involving you, I couldn't resist a jab. Linda gave me a scathing look and demonstratively walked off to the bathroom, slamming the door. I sighed, anticipating that this week would be long and painful. Our first day at the resort was relatively calm. We went skiing, enjoyed the winter landscapes, and tried to keep our distance from each other. But in the evening, when we returned to the room, we found ourselves face to face again. Could you remove your things from my half of the room? Linda asked irritably, seeing my jacket carelessly thrown over a chair. Actually, this is a common area, I objected, and my jacket doesn't bother you in any way. Your sloppiness annoys me, Linda persisted. You've always been so disorganized. I rolled my eyes, but still put the jacket in the closet. I didn't want to start another meaningless squabble. In the evening, we decided to have dinner at the hotel restaurant. The conversation was strained at first, but gradually we found a common topic, travel. Do you remember our trip to Italy a couple of years ago? Linda suddenly asked. Of course, I smiled, remembering those carefree days. It was unforgettable. We started sharing memories about that trip, how we walked through the streets of Rome, admired the sunset on the seashore, dined in small family restaurants, and for the first time in a long while, I saw Linda not as an eternally dissatisfied mother-in-law, but as a woman, beautiful, intelligent, with a spark of adventurism in her eyes. You know, I've always had a soft spot for you, Linda suddenly confessed, looking at me over the glass. Even when you and Sarah first started dating, I was dumbfounded, not knowing what to say. I never thought that I could evoke any feelings in Linda other than annoyance. I, I also always found you an attractive woman, I stammered, feeling the blood rushing to my cheeks. But I tried not to think about it because you're my wife's mother. Linda smirked and covered my hand with hers. That touch sent an electric shock through my body. We're both adults, Michael, she said, looking straight into my eyes. And now that we're alone in this room, far from everyone, don't you feel that there's something between us? I swallowed, unable to look away from her lips. My mind was telling me that this was insane, that I needed to stop immediately. But the desire that had been building up for years suddenly burst out, washing away all arguments of reason. Yes, I feel it. I whispered, and leaning in, kissed Linda on the lips. The morning greeted me with a splitting headache and a burning sense of shame. Memories of the past night came crashing down on me like an icy wave. How could I have succumbed to this crazy impulse? How could I have betrayed Sarah by sleeping with her mother? Linda was still sleeping beside me, and I looked at her naked body in horror, imagining my wife's reaction if she found out what had happened. No, no one should know about this. We had to pretend that nothing had happened and try to forget about this night as soon as possible. I carefully slipped out of bed, trying not to wake Linda, and began to dress hurriedly. I had to get out of the room before she woke up. If only I didn't run into someone I knew in the hallway. But when I had already grabbed the door handle, I heard Linda's voice behind me. Already running away? 
and I thought you were a gentleman and would at least say goodbye. I froze in place, then slowly turned around. Linda was sitting up in bed, wrapped in a sheet, and looking at me with a smirk. Listen, Linda, what happened last night? It was a mistake. We better pretend that nothing happened. A mistake? She raised an eyebrow ironically. I think you quite enjoyed it. And don't tell me you didn't want it. I felt myself blushing. Yes, to be honest, I really wanted Linda. Maybe I always did. I was just afraid to admit it to myself. Still, it's wrong, I muttered. You're my wife's mother and I... I shouldn't have given in to temptation. Linda sighed heavily and threw back the sheet, revealing her shapely legs. My breath caught at the sight. Slowly, as if teasing, she ran her hand over her body, from the curve of her neck to her thigh. Michael, don't be such a child, for God's sake. We're adults and have the right to decide who to share a bed with. And right now, I want only one thing, to repeat what happened last night. With those words, she beckoned me with her finger. And I, feeling the last bits of common sense leaving my mind, stepped towards her. Our lips met in a hot, passionate kiss. Linda's hand slipped under my shirt, caressing my skin and making me tremble with excitement. Clothes flew to the floor, and soon we were lying on the bed, our naked bodies entwined, skin to skin, breath to breath. My hands explored every curve of Linda's body, reveling in its silkiness and warmth. Her soft moan sounded like the most beautiful music to me. With kisses, I traced a path down her body, teasing, stoking desire. Linda arched to meet me, tangling her fingers in my hair. Her touches, frank and sensual, drove me crazy. At some point, reality ceased to exist. There was only the two of us, lost in ecstasy. Waves of pleasure washed over us one after another until we reached the peak, merging into one. One last drawn-out moan, one last shuddering breath, and we were lying next to each other, sweaty and satisfied. For a while we were silent, trying to catch our breath and comprehend what had happened. I gently stroked Linda's hair, savoring her closeness. Now, at this moment, everything seemed so right. But somewhere on the edge of my consciousness, a thought was already forming that these moments of passion would come at a high price. The rest of our stay at the resort turned into a continuous series of furtive glances, accidental touches, and nightly rendezvous when Linda and I, waiting for everyone to fall asleep, indulged in passion risking being caught off guard at any moment. It was sheer madness. I realized that I was playing with fire, that sooner or later our affair would be exposed and it would destroy my family. But every time I was near Linda, I forgot about everything in the world. Her touches, her kisses, seemed to deprive me of my will, turning me into an obedient puppet. We need to stop this, I said to her one night as we lay in bed, still breathing heavily after another round of lovemaking. Sarah is starting to suspect something, and anyway, it's too risky. Linda propped herself up on her elbow and looked at me with a smile. In the semi-darkness, her eyes seemed almost black. Don't be silly, Michael. We're adults and have the right to do what we want. Besides, don't you like what's going on between us? She ran a finger over my chest, and I shivered with pleasure. Damn it, of course I liked it. But I couldn't let passion take precedence over reason. That's not the point, I objected. It's just wrong. You're my wife's mother, and what we're doing, it's a betrayal of Sarah. Linda abruptly pulled away and sat up in bed, hugging her knees. Her face hardened. So you're choosing her after all, huh? Despite what's happening between us? I sighed. How could I explain to her that it wasn't about choosing between her and Sarah? That I loved my wife and didn't want to hurt her, but at the same time couldn't resist the crazy attraction I felt for Linda? I'm not choosing anyone. I said wearily. We just need to stop this before it's too late, before we ruin everything completely. Linda was silent, staring off to the side, and then suddenly she turned to me and said bitterly, Fine, great. So for you, everything that happened between us was just a mistake, a momentary weakness? Well, have it your way. But know this, I'm not going to pretend that nothing happened, and if Sarah asks me directly, I will tell her the truth. I felt a chill inside at those words. Not that. I couldn't let Sarah find out about my affair with Linda. It would break her heart and destroy our family. Linda, please don't, I began imploringly, but she had already gotten out of bed and started getting dressed. Don't what? Don't be honest with my own daughter? 
Sorry, Michael, but I can't do that. I've kept silent about my feelings for too long. And look where it's led. No, now be ready to face the consequences. With those words, she abruptly threw open the door and walked out of the room, leaving me in complete confusion. What was I to do now? How could I prevent the catastrophe that would inevitably unfold when Sarah learned the truth? I clutched my head, feeling like I was being sucked into a vortex from which there was no escape. The return home was a real nightmare. The whole way I was restless, wondering if Linda had already told Sarah everything. Judging by the fact that my wife was behaving as usual, my secret was still undiscovered for now. But how long would that last? The next few days turned into torture for me. I jumped at every phone call, every knock on the door, expecting to see Sarah's furious face and hear her demands for an explanation. But days passed, and nothing happened. Apparently, Linda had decided to keep our affair a secret for now. However, just as I was beginning to breathe a little easier, fate dealt me another blow. One evening, Sarah sat me down for a serious talk and announced that she was pregnant. The news that should have filled me with joy instead plunged me into even greater despair. A child. We were going to have a child, and I had managed to betray my wife in the most vile way. How could I look my baby in the eyes, knowing what a scoundrel their father was? How could I build a happy family on a foundation of lies and deceit? I didn't know what to do. I couldn't confess to Sarah. It would destroy her. But I couldn't keep silent either. The guilt was eating me up inside. And then there was Linda, who at any moment could decide to reveal our secret and turn my life into hell. In the end, I made the only decision that seemed right to me. I decided to leave, leave Sarah, leave our unborn child, leave everything I held dear. I knew it would break their hearts, but it was better than letting them live with a liar and a cheater. I packed my things and left a note for Sarah, apologizing for my cowardice and asking her not to look for me. And then I got in the car and drove away, not knowing where I was going or what I would do next. My past life was over. Ahead lay only uncertainty and the heavy burden of guilt that I would carry with me forever. But I had no other choice. I had to pay for my mistake, even if it meant losing everything I loved. As the city lights faded in the rearview mirror, I finally let the tears flow that I had been holding back all this time. Tears of shame, despair, and bitter regret. I had destroyed my own happiness with my own hands, and now I had to live with the consequences. But perhaps, Somewhere in the depths of my soul, I still hoped that one day I would be able to make amends for my sins and find peace, even if it took the rest of my life. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.